this one. In the AFC South, bonus coverage coming up as soon as we get to zero on this one. It's going to be the best start ever for a first-year coach in Green Bay history. I mentioned that before. Is the 15th ever to have the title of head coach of this franchise. It goes back to 1919 when they were the uh, Acme Packers. And not a one of those rookie coaches ever made the playoffs his first year. And they're six and one. So for Tony, Tracy, and Gene Steratore. This is Jim Nance saying so long from Green Bay. It's time for bonus coverage. Let's go to James Brown in New York. All right, Jim, we take you to the matchup. AFC South showdown. Houston trailing by seven to the Indianapolis Colts at the two-minute warning. And we will get you out to the announcers at that game. Greg Gumbel, Trent Green, and Melanie Collins. Houston leading the division. Indianapolis just a notch behind. And a win here puts the Colts a notch ahead. Each team two timeouts remaining. Offense number 72. That penalty will be disregarded. The game is over. That'll do it from Buffalo. 31-21 the final for James Lofton and Gene Steratore. This is Andrew Catalan saying so long from Buffalo. Let's go to James Brown in New York. Buffalo now 5-1 for the first time since 08. We take you to the Houston at Indy contest. A buck 54 four one, four left one. in regulation. Indy up by seven. Let's join oh. Greg Gumbel. And then that puts a timeout in the pocket of the Texans. CBS Sports presents the Geico Play of the Day. Over in the Meadowlands, Arizona's punter Andy Lee has his punt blocked by the Giants' Michael Thomas. Former Cardinal Elijah Penny profits from the miscue, falling on the ball for a Giants touchdown. Penny earns his team seven points, and Arizona learns having a punt blocked in the end zone is a Cardinal mistake. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. This is the State Farm Post Game Show. And hello again, everyone. Welcome to the State Farm Post Game Show. And a reminder, tonight on CBS begins with 60 Minutes and the mystery of the stolen Christopher Columbus letters. That'll be followed by an all-new episode of God Friend and Me, including NCIS Los Angeles and Madam Secretary. That's tonight only on CBS. Back here with the full house as we get you caught up with all the highlights the first slate of games today. All righty, guys. Pretty exciting game in Indianapolis today between the Indianapolis Colts and, of course, the Houston Texans. And both quarterbacks played really well. Jacoby Brissett was 26 of 39, 326 yards and four touchdowns. How about that? Right there, Pascal, Zach Pascal. And on this uh, play right here to end the game, Deshaun Watson's going to have a ball tip off Kiki Cutie's hands into the uh, returning Darius Leonard. <laughs> they go on to win 30 to 23. Colts now lead the AFC South by virtue of a 4-2 record. Obviously, one less game coming off of their bye to the Texans' 4-3 record. But both quarterbacks played pretty well today. Brissett with a career-high four touchdowns. Okay, here you go. You got the Bengals uh, being visited by the Jaguars and Gardner Minshew. He's going to find the end zone right here for a touchdown. That's Keelan Cole. And then back, Andy Dalton's now going to be intercepted right here. Oh. Yannick Ndakwe is going to take this all the way back for a touchdown. Oh, is right as the Bengals remain winless. Jacksonville wins on the road with a backup quarterback, Gardner Minshew. As you can see, the Bengals are 0-6. Jacksonville 2-4. They're leading 27-16 right now. A little bit, uh, about 23 seconds left to go in the game. Well, the Miami Dolphins were leading at halftime, but that was the last lead they would have. You can see here Josh Allen gets a touchdown pass to Cole Beasley, also hit John Brown. And then on the onside kick, if the Miami came back, their last-ditch effort, here it is going to be. Micah Hyde gets the ball, should just go down, but no. Oh, no. no, he's going to take it, and he's going to go 45 yards for the touchdown, and the Buffalo Bills come back, and they win the game again. 31-21 again. You can see Josh Allen did not turn the ball over, ran the ball when needed to, played a very solid football game. Josh Allen, 16-26, 202 yards and two touches. After the game, he talked without Andrew Catalan. Josh, congratulations on the victory. You guys were down 14-9 at the half. What was said in the locker room and what changed in the second half? You know, we, we came out a little rusty uh, in the first half. You know, we were moving the ball. Can't, we weren't finishing down in the red zone. 
A um, couple plays stalled out, missed a couple throws. We just told each other, let's just relax, calm down, let's get to playing our football. Let's not shoot each other or shoot, shoot ourselves in the foot, and that's what we did. We came out, our defense got, you know, uh, got the hang of it, and so did the offense. We started moving the ball, putting it in the end zone. That's what we got to do. Josh, it really seems like you and John Brown are becoming a hot item. The guy can really get down the field, can he? Not only that, you know, um, just his route running, his technique is awesome. On top of that, he's just a great human being. Uh, the way he talks, the way he communicates to his players, um, communicates to me on what he wants and what he sees, you know, that, that just doesn't happen. That, that's a lot of work. Um, you know, I appreciate what he does for this team. Appreciate appreciate how hard he works. Um, you know, he's, he's a very big inspiration for a lot of guys on the team. Josh, congratulations on the victory. We'll see you again. Sounds good. Thank you, guys. All right, guys. Josh Allen, second half, much better than the first half. You can see that he's a little bit frustrated, I think. I'll watch some of these throws now. This kid has Touch. one of the strongest arms in the NFL. And if he ever really, truly harnesses this, it's going to be pretty good up there in Buffalo. They get the 5-1. and one. They have a top-ranked defense. They can stick with anybody. They can make it tough on opposing quarterbacks. But you can see right there, 16 to 26, as JB said, those two interceptions, as Phil said in the pregame show, Josh, just don't turn it over. You have the better team in that for itself out here in the second half. And with that excellent start by the Buffalo Bills this season, of course, a jubilant locker room after the game. Anytime you win, it's a good thing, right? Anytime you win, it's a good thing, man. Do not lose that in this win right here, okay? Learn from it. That second half, a lot of character in this room right here, a lot of character and leadership in this room. First half, not up to our stand. Right? We gotta look hard at that first half, small focus on it and learn from it. And continue to move forward. I got to tell you guys, I mean, I look at around the league. That guy right there, Sean McDermott, I think is one of the best coaches in the NFL for this reason, this reason alone. He's very consistent week in, week in and week out. He identifies with his players. He's with them. He trusts them, and they play very hard for him. It's a very well-coached team that won't beat themselves, and as they continue to get better and maybe more explosive on offense, we know what his impact has been. That coach, Sean McDermott, on the defensive side of the ball, that's going to be a hard place to go play in late December and January. You know what he was saying today, right? Right there? He goes, we were not sharp, so don't apologize. We won the game because, right. you know, that, that's the sign of a good team that's not sharp, not really ready to go. They didn't look emotionally into it because maybe it's the Miami Dolphins, but they found a way to win. A way to win. And Josh Allen, that was big for him, to play an error-free game, to make some big throws again once down the stretch. And, uh Hey, he's right. Great victory. Yeah, credit to McDermott being honest and transparent, saying that wasn't up to our standards in that right. first half. And, you know, speaking of that, when it comes to standards, as soon as Josh Allen was named the starter, everybody wants to compare him to passing quarterbacks, to prolific ones. He's not that yet. You'll see some passes where he does have beautiful touch, and then there's times where he just wants to use that arm strength. It reminds me of a young Matt Stafford. I played with him when he was very young in this league, and I remember going to him at practice saying, Hey, Matt, just chill out, man. You don't have to throw <laughs> every ball as hard as you can. Yeah. And you can see that Josh Allen is now starting to have that Getting discernment. Better. And you guys know as quarterbacks, there's a moment in your career where it clicks. I don't have to throw this ball like it's he's the last close. one I ever you know, He's getting close. He's still yeah. like a kind of a bucking bull in a, you know, in a china shop. It's like it's what it's <laughs> like with him. He's all over the place. Right. But I will say this. One quarterback who had a, an absolutely almost perfect day was Jacoby Brissett. Yes. You know, and Frank Wright keeps yeah. pushing the right buttons with those guys. Uh, they got Darius Leonard back today. This was a slugfest between these two teams. Yeah. You know, it was interesting. I don't think the Colts or the Bills are really overly happy with the way that they yeah. played in totality, which is a good thing, which means that they can get better. But I still think think these are two of the better teams in the AFC. You say Frank great. was pushing the Reich buttons? Great. Yes, the Reich buttons. Yeah. Great game plan by the Colts because you don't run the ball against the big front of the Houston Texans. Right. So he put the football game in the hands of Jacoby Brissett, and he came through today. Brissett has been getting it done, yep. loving what Frank Reich is doing overall, coaching through difficulty. Hey, folks, more to come on the State Farm Post Game Show. And uh, believe it or not, Phil will be in uh, good form when we come back. Wow. We'll continue with yeah. more Don't believe right it. after Don't this. Believe it. Back here in Studio 43 with the State Farm Post Game Show, we continue with the highlights with our guy, Nate. Let's get to these highlights. Oakland Raiders, Green Bay Packers. Aaron Rodgers had himself a day. Check him out right here. He drops it off to Jake Kumaro. Oh, no, he didn't. A little tote jack swag walking the line on the sideline. That was a TD right there. And here he is saying, you know what? I threw for six TDs. 
but I'm going to go ahead and run for one. And there it is right there. That's my guy, Aaron Rodgers, with the discount double check in the end zone. Like I said, 25 for 31, 429. My man had TDs on top of TDs on top of TDs. The Packers all over the Raiders, 42 to 24. All the talk about whether or not Coach LaFleur and Aaron Rodgers are going to get along well. Folks, I, I would think that's okay now. <laughs> Let's check out the locker room after the game. I got one game ball today. And this is just pretty special right here now. First time in Packer history a guy completes a game with a perfect passer rating. Hold on, 25 of 31, 429 yards, five, five touchdowns. <laughs> well, that'll keep young, that's for sure. But Aaron Rodgers, a couple things today, just tremendous protection he had. That pass was to Aaron Jones. And every time you watch these highlights, look where there's nobody around him where he has time to throw against an Oakland defense that really needs pressure, whatever. And here's what I love, what they've been doing a lot more of. Play action, crossing across the field. You think the receiver's going deep? He cuts across the field. Aaron Rodgers finds him. Beautiful throw to... Valdez scandling that time and look what he did four TD passes I take a look at this list now he's in pretty good company right there with those guys 22 touchdowns now uh, games with four or more touchdown passes in a game and after the game our Tracy Wilson caught up with the great Aaron Rodgers for you your 350th touchdown pass I don't know if you knew that fastest player in NFL history to get there does that mark mean anything to you it means I've been playing for a long time <laughs> I'm, I'm proud of that. Uh, love playing here at home. We got a great crowd, and we got some special brewing right now. We got to take it, you know, take it in stride and keep building. But I really like the group that we got. I really like the effort we put forward today. I like our chances moving forward. One more. You did had the rushing touchdown, but no Lambo leave. What's up with that? I'm a little too old. I saw it last week a couple guys try to get in, couldn't get in. They used it in the team meeting this week. I don't want to be that guy trying to jump up there. I love our fans, but uh, my leg's are a little sore today, so I'll get up there later, but uh, today wasn't the day. Appreciate it. Enjoy the win. Thank you. All right, let's stick with the NFC North, Minnesota Vikings, Detroit Lions. Kirk Cousins, he was balling out today, too. Matter of fact, there was three NFC North quarterbacks that did their thing. There's Kyle Rudolph, the red zone tight end. He gets in for the touchdown. You know who else is balling? My guy Dalvin Cook. That's a four-yard TD. 22 carries, 142 and one TD. Kirk Cousins, 24 of 34, 337, four TDs. But most importantly, he wins a big game in a big moment in the NFC North. How about that? So boom, as we take a look at the NFC yep. North, I mean, it is looking tight indeed. Green Bay improves to 6-1 in Minnesota with the win staying right there. Chicago in action. Yeah, tough. Chicago's going to get Mitch Trubisky back. But I'll, I'll tell you one thing. This was a big game for Kirk Cousins. You know, this is uh, the third time he's now beaten Detroit. He's beaten them three times in a row in the last year. To win on the road in the division against a much improved Detroit team, even though you wouldn't see that. Kerryon Johnson got hurt in this game. Uh, Darius Slay got hurt in this game. So they lost two of their big, bigger, better players. But he was all over the place today. He threw Kirk Cousins at 24 of 34 for 337 yards and four touchdowns. I mean, look at some of these guys are running wide open, by the way. And he got rid of the ball good. So you, mm. know, you want to be on Kirk Cousins, and everybody wants to be negative about him. But the last three games, Phil, he has been as about as good as been advertised. Close to 1,000 yards in the last three games. What, 10 touchdowns, Jay? 10 touchdowns in that period of time. And you know what, Nate, when I think about this, again, we were talking about the receivers who complained the first couple of weeks, Stephon Diggs, Adam Thielen. Cousins has been on fire since. That's right. He's had to deal with a lot. There's a, a lot of uh, criticism when it comes to Kirk Cousins. You know, can he win the big game? Well, is I he mean, going to be that guy? A million a year comes, and the, rightfully so. I mean, it it comes it with it. But also, does he have that dog in him? You know what I learned last week after Zach Brown came out and said. He's probably the weakest link of their team. Uh -huh. And then he answered by torching that defense. Is that Kirk Cousins, even though he might be Mr. Dad Joke of the Year, he can go out there and put the team on his back. And he's playing at a high level. A lot, a lot of those quarterbacks right now are hearing what everybody's saying, and they're quietly just calming down the critics. Maybe he can't take it when it's not there and create it, which a lot of guys are doing. Maybe he can't. But you give him the opportunity. Come on. 
Who throws the ball crisper and prettier than Kirk Cousins? We see those long passes down the field. Today, Detroit was a great matchup for them. They fixed their offensive line in Minnesota. So as long as they're not in, you know, there's certain teams they don't match up well against. And when they don't, we kill Kirk Cousins. That's the only person well, we talk about. Well, just remember this. In the beginning of the year, they won a couple games at home where they just absolutely bullied the teams they were playing against, and they didn't really have the ball. So his numbers weren't that high. Right. Well, and they made they, a mistake by doing that, too. Right. And well, then they, well, the, I, I don't they know took the they, rhythm away from him a well, little bit. I, I don't think you make a mistake because what you're doing is you're establishing a mindset with your football team. That's not always just about the quarterback. And I'm just saying that this guy, this is about a football team that's the most balanced of any team well, right that, now. Well, that's the idea. It, it, it is the idea. And, and all of a sudden, the questions did come out, and they had to answer it. It gets so transparent. I don't know if it was the noise was that great on the inside, but the one thing he has done is he has silenced the critics. And you think about those three quarterbacks mm -hmm. in this in this, in this. Division. Yeah. Division yeah. one. Aaron Rodgers, Matthew Stafford, and now Kirk Cousins. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, this is this is going to go down should, to the end, and Trubisky's going to chance to show his Just remember, field. about a month ago, they walked off the field in Chicago and got, you know, their heads ha ha yeah. handed to them. Yeah. And then they went on this three-game winning streak right now. I, I still say it's going to be really tough to beat the Vikings in Minnesota. I, That's going to be almost impossible for anybody. Mm -hmm. And if they can win these games on the road, they have a very good chance of having home field advantage through the playoffs. I think this is definitely a playoff team if they stay healthy. Yeah. My they thing is play. just this. Whenever they lose, he is the guy. He's, yeah. He is just... Fairly he, it's, fairly, yep. it, I understand. <clears throat> but that it, there are certain quarterbacks, and they the narrative gets out there, and it doesn't change. The only thing that's going to change it for Kirk Cousins is winning big playoff games, probably winning the Super Bowl. Yeah. It, it will take for it to... For it to change. But like Boom said, though, you make 50 million with the Washington Redskins. You make over 90 million with the Minnesota Vikings. Just like Biggie said a long time ago, more money, more problems. You got to deal with <laughs> whatever comes if you're going to have that money in the count. But you mentioned those quarterbacks, coach. You got Kirk Cousins, Aaron Rodgers, Matt Stafford, over 1,100 yards today. But my guy, Aaron Rodgers, is playing at a different level. Keep in mind, he didn't play in the preseason. So he kind of caught his rhythm the first couple games of the year. And I know we talked about that relationship, and he's 15 oh, years in, and you can't teach an old dog new tricks, but you don't have to teach him new tricks if he's the biggest dog on the porch. Wait, you see they're giving new tricks. This is a different offense yeah, than is. we've ever it seen from is. Green Bay. Every week, they're adding on to their playlist, and it uh, once again today, I saw a few plays I haven't seen so far You know what, year. and I know that I've overworked this John Madden expression, but winning is a great deodorant. You saw that Green Bay locker room, how they rallied around mm -hmm. uh, Aaron, and with Kirk, at least he's responding. I like the medal that he's mm -hmm. won. No okay. More to come on the State Farm Post Game Show right after this. Hey, folks, join us on Saturday. It's the best game from the best conference the SEC on CBS features a huge matchup between ninth-ranked Auburn and second-ranked LSU in Baton Rouge. It all begins with college football today, 3 Eastern, right here on CBS, as we welcome you back to the State Farm postgame show and to the highlights with Phil. All right, here we go. San Francisco with the Washington Redskins. The weather was a story here in Washington. Rained the whole game. Adrian Peterson rushes left. The ball pops loose. Quan Alexander recovers it. The loose ball returns at 10 yards, leads to the 49ers. Second field goal of the day, put them up six to nothing. Then Nick Bosa gets the team's third sack of the day to end the game. Oh yeah, a little slide down there, it's pretty cool. It's always fun when you win the game in those kind of, that kind of weather, but nine to nothing San Francisco, really tough conditions for the quarterbacks. And San Francisco, they end up winning the game really just because their defense gave up nothing. And, to the but Redskins. look at the enthusiasm with which they're playing on the field. And, Bill, I made a comment before that, for what it's worth, preseason pundits had San Fran uh, rated in the lower half of the league and more. But you've always said, look, we don't play the game on paper, and let me see what the squad shows the first four games. And I think when you watch them, you, you see them playing a style of play that makes you want to question because they're just not that high-powered offense. It's almost mm. old-school football, but it's very old-school physical football, their defensive front, they get after you, they're young, and, they're, and they like to run the football with Jimmy Garoppolo. They got a, Kittle was one of the best tight ends in the game. So it, it is kind of an old-fashioned way when you talk about the new age offenses that are out there. But what it is, it's very sound. It plays to the strength of their team. It's a team built from the inside out. Matt Breida, Tevin Coleman, a great one-two combination. And, and Garoppolo 
fits in perfectly really with this offense. So, you know, this is a team that's they're 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 you're gonna have to pack your lunch, man. You you play this team, it's yeah. it's for 60 minutes. They're gonna punch you and you're gonna get knocked down. If you can keep getting back up, you yeah. got a chance with these guys. The question again, you always have can they get into a high scoring contest? But it may not get that because of how they play the game. Yeah, you gotta pack your lunch while they're packing their hard hat. They're bringing it, the old school yeah. style of football. And JB, you mentioned those pundits. I gotta admit, I was one of them. I said that they'd be bringing up the rear of the NFC West. And then I had to apologize a few weeks ago because you, <laughs> you can't sit here and, and, and criticize an undefeated team. Mm -hmm. I don't care how you win. I don't care how ugly it is. I don't care if the game is as ugly as the weather. If you get a dub, you walk in that locker room, you go into another week as one of the best teams in the business. As far as sustainability, Coach, if you punch teams in the mouth and you slow them down, <laughs> then you know what? They can't light up the scoreboard on you. You know what? Right. I, I, I was not. Hey, hey Bill, smile on that. You're dead. speaking you like that. Uh, you're I'm speaking talking to the language. Yeah, yeah, you, you flew in in that, huh? <laughs> you know what? I'm glad you're here in confession because I didn't say that earlier in the season. The only reason I didn't say that is because I knew that Jimmy Garoppolo would be healthy, yep. but also the, look at the investment that they have made with first-round draft picks on the defensive line. Yeah. And when we were talking about it in the pregame show today, what did we say about the Rams? The Rams may feel like their window is open, but when you take a look at the Seahawks, you take a look at the 49ers, and you take a look at even the Cardinals with Kyler Murray now, and you see all this young, really developing talent in this division, the Rams may be too late now. They, they don't, they're not going to have a first-round pick for five straight years. And uh, I think San Francisco, they give up 154 yards this game. They only had seven turnovers last year. They're already getting turnovers this year. I mean, this, the sky is the limit for this team. Well, team speed is great overall. I know they like another receiver on that football team. But when you think of the San Francisco 49ers, I think of that speed. I think of the fact that they're built around a complex running game. And it changes week to week. What works one week, they're going to use against you the following week. And it's really worked out awfully well. And also, you know, too, when they want to score, they haven't really had a chance to really open up their offense. Garoppolo is not quite in midseason form when you watch him. But Kyle Shanahan, he can get receivers open down the field. But the big thing is, is that defense. Mm. That is it. The speed, the size, you know, they got the look. It almost looks like the 49er team back when you did the Super Bowl when they played the Ravens. Right. Remember how good they look? Yeah. This team, when you just see them walk on the field, you go, Wow, that's what an NFL team should look like. Bill Cowher continued to sing the tune. I don't care what they talk about in terms of new school football. It's old school power running and punching them in the face, as you said. And speaking of the Rams, nobody knows. Yeah, they, we're going to talk about the Rams when we come back. Rams Cardinals highlights when we return to the State Farm Post Game Show. Matt and Drew, guess what? We'll be back with more football next Sunday. Doubleheader action in week eight, starting with the Broncos taking on the Colts or the Cardinals at the Saints. That'll be followed by the Browns and the defending Super Bowl champs, the Patriots. That's our featured matchup, and it all begins with the NFL today at noon Eastern right here on CBS as we bring you back inside of Studio 43 and the State Farm Post Game Show to the highlights. Yeah, uh, Eric Whittle says, I'm not ready to anoint everybody this, uh, our division, like the 49ers and the Seahawks. How about us? Jared Goff today, 22 at 37, 268 yards, two touchdowns. That one right there to Todd Gurley coming out of the backfield, showing a little bit of flashes of his old, and then all of a sudden, here goes there Jared Goff. A little bit making a guy miss with his feet. And on the day, you're going to see Dante Flower had three sacks. The team had five sacks. They had a very easy win over Atlanta. So you can see the frustration there on Dan Quinn's face. They won 37 to 10. Wow, here we go. Arizona Cardinals at the New York Giants. Chase Edmonds, that's right. Chase Esmond. Edmonds takes the handoff. Goes 22 yards for a touchdown. His third touchdown of the day put Arizona up 24 to 14. Daniel Jones gets drilled in the back by the blitzing Patrick Peterson and Hassan Reddick recovers the football. Arizona beats the New York Giants 24 to 21. A rough day for Daniel Jones. Yeah, Chase Edmonds, that was the big rush. 27 rushes for 126, three touchdowns. As I've said many times today, from forward and right across the street here, what a terrific job. You know he's a good running back. Um, well, first off, Daniel Jones sacked. How many times, Boomer? Eight. Wow, that hurts. That's yeah, a big Jones deal. Jones had four of those sacks, and it seemed like
They were blitzing a lot, and he didn't see a lot of these blitzes. That last sack and fumble looked like that uh, Saquon Barkley missed his man. Mm. Like, that was he did a, not was pick a, up the very guy. Very good timing the, by Patrick Peterson on the blitz, I will say that. Though. Yeah, corner good blitz, timing right? for the yeah, Cardinals blitz, to activate yeah. him today. Yeah, well, just, you know, the, the whole thing, blitzing a young quarterback, it worked for him today. And I think they, I thought they put too much pressure on Daniel Jones. Be a little more patient. The Giants were not patient with running the football. He kept throwing the foot. They were all over him. Fumbled again. The weather was terrible, too. The weather's terrible. So, man, that's the last thing you want to do is throw it every down in a, in a day like that. But but a really good win for the Cardinals. Yeah. Kyler Murray didn't have to throw the football, really. Uh, again, Chase Edmonds playing over the all-pro David Johnson. They're using him as a running back more than David Johnson. I ask you during the commercial break, and again, let's give credit to the, uh, to the Rams for sure, but what has happened to Atlanta. Yeah, I wonder if they're just, they paid a lot of guys. Um, this defense is getting shredded week in and week out. And, you know, I really wonder, and coach, you could probably speak to this better than I can. There's no edge there anymore. There's no, like, like you have to have a competitive desire and fire to go out there and play. And, you know, when you watch some of these teams each and every week, they bring it. Like the New England Patriots bring it every week. You don't yeah. always count on it. Now the 49ers are bringing it every week. <laughs> yeah. I think the Vikings are bringing it every week. The yeah. Bears defense, the Saints defense, they bring it every week. There's an edge. Uh, I don't know what has happened to that edge under Dan Quinn down in Atlanta. but it's like the air is out of that squad, right? It's not there. The edge is not there anymore. And they, you know, Dan Quinn took over the defensive play call and also this year, and, and, and defense really has been one of the biggest disappointments. And also to add injury to insult is uh, insult to injury is the fact that Matt Ryan went out of this game yeah. and looks like he had a significant injury. So we'll see to what extent it is. But this is definitely a team that's reeling right now, and they're in a downward spiral. It's Think about, oh, go ahead, Nate. No, it's, it's just unfortunate because it seems like they never recovered from that Super Bowl loss. All of that talent mm -hmm. that they have on the squad, and then they started adding pieces. We know that Julio Jones, he's a monster. They add Sanu, and then they bring in Calvin Ridley, and the running backs are there. Finally, Devontae Freeman is healthy, but it's all unraveling. And right now, it seems like this thing is imploding from within. You draft two linemen in the first round this, this year to help everything. And really, I think it comes down to this, Bill. That Super Bowl game, you think about that. I was sitting in the stands that day going, wow, they're so fast, and they did what? They could run the football, and the Patriots were really, like, traumatized early in that game by the speed and the way they ran the football. Kyle Shanahan, I hate to just put it on that, he leaves, the running game disappears. Mm. And a, the running game has gotten worse year by year, and now they don't even bother with really trying to run the football. That's why. It's all passing. That's why this is going to be one of the teams that better take a really good look at their roster and decide if they want to trade some of these players away. Yeah. At least to get some more draft picks, to get some younger guys in there. And, and to free up some to, of the and free up some of the money if they can. And you know, they got to start deciding whether or not Dan Quinn is here for the future. Mm -hmm. I mean, I hate talking about coaches' jobs and things of that nature. It's the reality of the business, though, but, but that team is flat. There's no edge and there's no fight. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what isn't uh, that isn't an edgy right now. That's that division of the NFC West. A year ago or two years ago, it might have been the worst division of football. You talk Kyler Murray, they've won three games in a row. Yep. Yeah, that, I feel like you always have a chance for that kid, a quarterback. And then Seattle, the way they're playing, the Rams are still division champs. And yeah. we talked about the 49ers. That may be the best division of football. Wow. Yeah. Speaking that's, of that West. tough schedule. Yeah. Look, Russell Wilson is like fine wine. Yep. I mean, he just gets <laughs> better with eight. Like you, JB. Hey, I, mean, I give compliments. Talk like about it, JB. Talk about it, JB. You're, what? JB, you are you are He's honest. speechless. Hey, hey, JB. No, 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 because I was going to talk about the merengue dance. <laughs> <laughs> Back with more after this. Back here inside of Studio 43, we have uh, added one more to the set, and that will be our insider, Jason Lockenfora, who has the latest on Atlanta. Yeah, well, in conversations with people close to ownership there, Arthur Blank, there were some who felt like, from talking to Blank, one more poor performance would probably be it. There were others I talked to who felt like, at this point, they've got a buy looming in two weeks. He'd wait till the buy. No one, however, feels like this is a tenable situation and, you know, that Dan Quinn is going to be there too much longer. Um, they, they've just been non-competitive for too many stretches of games. It's clear to ownership that stadium was empty by the start of the fourth quarter. I think the question is, what direction do they go? You know, they've gone with, with first-time head coaches for a while there. Does a Mike McCarthy with, with a Matt Ryan at this stage of his career make some sense? So those questions are being asked, and, and boom, to your point from the last segment, they are fielding a lot of calls on trades. I, I talked about Mohamed Sanu maybe ending up back with Kyle Shanahan in San Francisco. They would like to move uh, Vic Beasley. They may have to eat some money to do that, but that's another guy who maybe you catch a little pass rush you know, from him. It hasn't developed yet. 
and also Trufant, the corner, makes a lot of money. Would they eat some money now to save some money later? Because you were talking about this morning, yep. the, the Rams and five players, 55% of the cap. Yes. Atlanta next year has five players, 52%. So it's not mm. that much different. Time to ship them all out, man. Get them all out of there. Let's go. Let's start over and rip it down and uh, begin from, you know, where, where there's a they, – they have to find a coach that's going to go in there and bring some energy to this team. This team is, like I said, it's flat. It hasn't been good for two years, maybe even two and a half, three years. Uh, a lot of it falls on uh, Matt Ryan. I think the quarterback also is the kind of personality that directs your football team. And right now, losing seems to be acceptable. And that's a dangerous you know, spot to be in if you're an NFL team. It's unfortunate because it goes from the field to the sideline to the front office and now to ownership. You guys know we can do the show and talk X's and O's all day long. But sometimes X's and O's, they don't equate to dollars and cents. And you mentioned the stadium being half empty oh. and all that money you spent on a beautiful stadium. What do they want to do? You want to score touchdowns, sell tickets, put butts in seats and make some money all the while making a run at a Super Bowl. And right now, Atlanta, they're not doing any of that. And it's, and it's kind of gone downhill since the Super Bowl, as you talked about. And you, as you get further away from the Super Bowl, as losing becomes a part of the culture down there, it, it makes it really, really hard to have a, a turnaround because I think this has been a team that's relied on offense to bail them out of games. They've never really had a dominant defense. It's been about speed and protecting leads and getting pass rushers. But all of a sudden now that defense has been a sieve and they find themselves in catch-up mode. They've missed on some offensive linemen that's, that's breaking down in the protection. Yes. Never really had a running game. As you said, made a great point, Phil. They've kind of gotten away from that running game, which is how they got to the Super Bowl. They had balance on offense, which also took away the pressure on the defense. So it's a, it, it's a pretty big turnaround when you're looking at that team. Two things owners can do. They can count to 11, <laughs> so they know when you have the wrong guys on the right and wrong right, guys right, on the team. That's right, yep. And they can look at empty seats. So when you make those mistakes, you're going to pay for it. Fast teams, you know what they do during the season? They get slower. What do big teams do during the season? They, get they don't get smaller. <laughs> so, you know, when you build your team to be fast and small and all that, when it slows down, you lose your edge, and I think that's what you I'm saying. You like guys with backs wide enough to be able to do See what? a double feature on that thing. Uh, that's <laughs> what I like. <laughs> People at this desk, as the season goes on, we get bigger. <laughs> Stay. Uh, he pointed a finger at me. Back with more after this. <laughs> is the State Farm Post Game Show. Hey, folks, we welcome you back to the State Farm Post Game Show. And a reminder that tonight on CBS begins with 60 Minutes and the mystery of the stolen Christopher Columbus letters that will be followed by all new episodes of God Friended Me, NCIS Los Angeles, and Madam Secretary tonight only on CBS. Boom. Hey, how about this Colts team, man? I I'll tell you why. Everybody thought the season was not everybody because they didn't think this in Indianapolis, but maybe outside they did. Thought the season would be over because no Andrew Luck. All Jacoby Brissett does is throw four touchdowns today. And my buddy Frank Reich addressing his team after today's big win. He is against what the you Texans. call a leader in getting it done there in Indy. That would be Frank Reich. We know we don't get too high, we don't get too low, right? We're, we got, still got a long way to go. But that was that was a great step right there. We talked about that little journey on our mountain. That was a critical checkpoint right there, right? We checked that one off. We got to get our minds right, come back, and get this thing going again. We're just getting started, man. We got to keep focused. The whole thing has been about focus. So let's keep doing that, all right? All right, here we go. You know, as I hear that, what a great job by Frank Reich. And, and Boomer, I know he's a your good friend. You all were roommates in college, right? That's right. Best man. Yeah. But he went for college jobs and could not get it. And you know what? Wow. It was a blessing. I don't think he'd be a great college coach. I really don't. But he's a great pro coach because he knows how to talk to men and lead men. And he played the game for many years. So all that, and we see that. And he's a great designer mm -hmm. of offense and play calling. That is that all the reasons why they're winning, and I'm happy for it. Let's go to our Super Bowl coach. What is it that you've seen in Frank Reich that you like? He, he, he adjusts, and I think that it, he doesn't get he'll overreact to Andrew Luck. Okay, we're not going to play Andrew Luck. Well, we're going to be fine. I think, you know, Boomer, you know, he's played in the league, and there's a lot to be said, and mm -hmm. you said this too, because, you know, when you play in the league, you're talking to men. You're talking to people that, you know, there's different ages. There's not a bunch of 18 and 19-year-olds like you have in college where you're telling them what to do, and they'll do it. They won't even ask you questions. You're going to get asked questions. You, you're going to have people asking you why you want me to do that. So you have to talk to them, not talking down to them. He talks to them, but he also has a plan in place. He was a backup quarterback. We all know the great comeback he had because, you know what, he prepared. 
I think I sense with Frank Reich, and I don't know him like you do, Boom, but to him, the biggest thing is about preparation. Mm -hmm. The preparation and making sure you put yourself in position. Now, when Sunday comes, you know, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. We win a game, great. Let's move on to the next week. We move, lose a game, it's great. Let's move on to the next week. Let's learn from our mistakes. Let's learn from our wins. And as you said, stay right here. You don't get too high with the highs. You don't get too low with the lows. Yeah. And you kind of stay even keel and you try to get on a run as you're going to try to do and put yourself in position to start the playoffs. Yeah, Coach, you know this. It's hard to lead men. As I like to say, lead men with millions because you're dealing with egos. You're dealing with all these different individuals that might be playing for different reasons. And you know your friend. We had him on the show a couple weeks ago. He laughs, he jokes. But yeah. you know what I love about that locker room atmosphere? He didn't go in there and celebrate like it was a Super Bowl victory. Yeah. Yeah. No. He's ready to move on and move forward. Right. And let me say this. Jacoby Brissett might be the most underappreciated quarterback in Not the business right not. now. Not anymore, he's not. I, one quick word about Frank, and it's built throughout the Indianapolis Colts, and that's along with uh, Chris Ballard. Trust. Mm. They all trust each other. Yeah. Frank's got a bunch of good guys that trust in their coach. and he Hey, so the question is, does Bill Cowher have some work to do with this team right here or what? I, not with us. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next week right here on CBS.